Basketball Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal recently posted a freestyle snippet on TikTok and YouTube that went viral. Shaq absolutely killed the freestyle, and it was all around impressive. Ha, sicker than your average, great with the drink, 21 Savage. Please do call me Diesel. The visuals, the lyrics, and the beat were all insane. The video features Shaq rapping over new metal classic, Bodies, by Drowning Pool. It's a bizarre experience, but it definitely works. It makes me wonder if this is just a one-off freestyle, or if he's teasing a new album. Some people may not know, but during the 90s, Shaquille O'Neal released four rap albums, including his platinum certified debut, Shaq Diesel. At this point, Shaquille O'Neal has pretty much done it all. From winning three NBA championships with the Lakers and one with the Miami Heat, to a sports analyst for TNT, to an electronic DJ as DJ Diesel, to a major investor in real estate, to a Hollywood movie star with over 70 credits on his IMDB profile, and even a commercial actor for tons of things like pizza, icy hot, and car insurance. Get your anonymous online quote and ride with the general. But on top of all that, he also has a successful rap career under his belt. Life's a B and then your D. Refer to Nazi Nas, Illmatic, CD number three static. Shaq was on fire in the 90s. He was playing basketball for LSU and named College Player of the Year in 1991. The following year, he was the number one pick for the NBA draft and signed a $40 million contract with the Orlando Magic. He quickly became the player to watch after being named the Player of the Week during his first week of playing professional basketball. This was the first time that ever happened in NBA history. O'Neal runs the floor, takes it all the way! In 1993, Shaq was barely a year into his contract with the Orlando Magic, when he signed again. But this time it wasn't a contract for the NBA, but rather with a music label, Jive Records. At this point, Shaq was already gaining a ton of coverage as a basketball star, but now, when he wasn't on the court, he was dedicated to showing off his talents in an entirely different way, now as a rapper. That year, he released his debut album, Shaq Diesel. The album sold over a million physical copies and went platinum. It reached number 25 on the Billboard Hot 200. What's next on the menu? Mike Checker, the rim and rhyme wrecker. Rock from here to Mecca. Boom, shaka lecka lecka. There was no questioning that this was a lucrative side career for Shaq. He wanted to keep this momentum going, and the following year, in November of 1994, he released his second album titled Shaq Fu, The Return. This album had some well-known features on it, including members of the Wu-Tang Clan. While not as successful as his previous album, it was still well-received, peaking at 67 on the Billboard 200 and selling over half a million physical copies, earning Shaq Fu a gold certification. He took me from a boy to a man so filled as my father because my biological didn't bother. In a review for All Music, one reviewer had this to say about the album, a solid but not outstanding rap CD that takes another step forward in that no man's land between legitimacy and novelty act. We're breaking into programming right now to bring you a live news conference about to take place in Atlanta, at which Shaquille O'Neal is expected to announce that he has signed a seven-year, $120 million contract to join the LA Lakers. In the summer of 1996, Shaq signed a five-year deal to the Lakers for $120 million. At the time, this was the biggest deal in NBA history, and this is where he played alongside 19-year-old Kobe Bryant. The two stars had very different personalities, as Kobe was an introvert and focused on putting all his time into basketball, while Shaq was an extrovert and loved to get involved with different avenues outside of basketball, like rap and acting. This would be the foundation that led to a lot of issues between the two players. Later that year, Shaq released his third album, You Can't Stop the Rain. The album was moderately successful, peaking at 82 on the Billboard 200. The most impressive part of the album may have been a verse from the Notorious B.I.G., which was one of his last verses before he passed away. Supposedly, the two had even hung out together on the day that Biggie was shot and killed. They were planning to attend a party together that evening, but Shaq had fallen asleep, and he missed it. Shaq later said, Big came in and knocked out his verse in like five minutes. I knew then I wasn't that good. Some people think that this may have been demotivating for Shaq, causing him to take his rap career a lot less seriously. 
In September of 1998, he released his fourth and final rap album, Respect. The album peaked at number 58 on the Billboard 200 chart, but it only sold a little over 100,000 copies. The project even had a feature from Kobe on the song Three Times Dope. The album had 19 tracks total, and a review from Vibe said that each one straddled the line between mediocre and unlistenable. But Shaq's journey with music didn't stop there. Shortly after, a five-year feud was born between Kobe and Shaq. Shaq said that the young superstar wasn't maturing fast enough, and that he was way too selfish for their team to win. On the other hand, Kobe thought that Shaq was too distracted and refused to stay in shape. Kobe said he would have had 12 championships if only Shaq had been as dedicated as him and stayed in shape. Oddly enough, during this time, Kobe started to work on a rap album of his own, and he even got a verse from 50 Cent, who was one of the hottest rappers at that time. Kobe's album was never released, but many people still thought it was hypocritical of him to work on an album after what he said about Shaq not focusing enough on basketball. Then, in 2004, Shaq was traded to Miami, and the two were no longer teammates, which closed a chapter for the dynamic duo. But later, in 2008, Shaq dropped a freestyle dissing Kobe, but he insisted it was all in good fun. But the lyrics said otherwise. Kobe, nigga, tell me how my ass tastes. Okay, Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. Kobe ratted me out, that's why I'm getting divorced. He said Shaq gave a bitch a meal. I don't do that, cause my name should kill. Not only did Shaq make it sound like Kobe was to blame for his marriage problems, but he also said that Kobe and the Lakers were subpar without him. Shaq received major criticism for the freestyle, and after that, he put the mic down for a while, and he didn't revisit rapping until just recently. During his break, he was still involved with EDM music as DJ Diesel. People never knew the true reason Shaq's rap career ended, or was rather put on a long pause. Some thought it was the death of Biggie and how he realized it just wasn't his thing, or that the late Kobe wanted him to take his basketball career more seriously. But when I look at Shaq's life as an outsider, my guess is he simply wanted to try other things. The man is constantly doing something new, and it always seems like he's enjoying himself. But with this new freestyle and the traction that it gained on TikTok and YouTube, it makes me wonder if Shaq's preparing to step back onto the rap scene to drop another album. Comment and let me know what you think. Maybe I'm just reading into things way too much. I love being able to make these videos. So if you enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe to the channel. It's a free way that you can show support. I release hip hop related content every week. So check out some of my other videos as well. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.